decades before Wreck-It Ralph visualized the world on the other side of the video game screen, Saturday mornings were host to another animated hero in his adventures fighting against the pixelated forces of evil. It was cross-promotional marketing for all kinds of Nintendo products, driven by a team of producers whose depth of familiarity with those products was seemingly limited to the names on the boxes. It was a series that managed to make it to broadcast despite legal issues plaguing the production before, during, and after its creation. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the history of Captain N, the Game Master. Captain N, the Game Master, hit televisions in September of 1989, propelled by the astronomical success of the Nintendo Entertainment System. Released in the United States in 1986, the Nintendo Entertainment System reinvented the American video game market and crushed nearly every other toy and game option available at retail. The console and games were such a huge commercial success that it was only a matter of time before their influence was seen in every other realm of pop culture, from comic books to toys to cartoons. Captain N, the Game Master, was produced by Deke Entertainment, the folks who brought you Inspector Gadget, Mask, Care Bears, Jason the Wheeled Warriors, Pole Position, and many others. Like the real Ghostbusters, Dennis the Menace, Alf the Animated Series, and many others. Like Cops, Starcom, G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, The Get Along Gang, and many others. Like Popples, Kissy Fur, Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling, Rainbow Bright, and many others. Like the concept for the series was simple. Kevin Keane, an average American teenager from California, is playing Mike Tyson's punch out on his Nintendo. Nintendo Entertainment System with his dog Duke, when suddenly he and his dog Duke are sucked into the ultimate warp zone, a vortex surging from their television which transports them to a realm called Videoland. Here they meet and join forces with a team of all-star characters from some of the most popular titles currently available from everyone's favorite home entertainment system. Simon Belmont from Konami's Castlevania, Mega Man from Capcom's Mega Man, and Kid Icarus from Nintendo's Kid Icarus. Kevin is proclaimed to be the hero of destiny known as Captain N by a talking Nintendo Power Glove, and he arrives fully armed with his Nintendo Light Zapper, Nintendo D-Pad Controller Belt Buckle, and a totally on-brand Letterman jacket sporting a big letter N for Northridge, California High School, home of the fighting fish, but also Nintendo. Captain N, Duke the Dog, and all of Team N must fight against the forces of evil led by Mother Brain from Nintendo's Metroid to protect Princess Lana, an original creation designed for the show, and return Videoland to its proper place as a peaceful monarchy. Mother Brain is this close to conquering all of Videoland once and for all. The Palace of Power, Princess Lana, and Team N are making a final stand against total domination. <laughs> Lots of other characters and Nintendo products and references make appearances throughout the series, but there is an inescapable feeling that something isn't quite right. If this really is a marketing ploy to sell more games, more Nintendo Entertainment Systems, why don't the characters look more like the characters in the actual games that are the intended subject of the weekly half-hour sales pitch? And why is the word Nintendo never, ever mentioned by anyone in the show or, for that matter, in the title of the show itself? The circumstances behind the creation of the Captain N animated series are questionable at best, a muddled corporate cluster at worst. Captain Nintendo first appeared in Nintendo Power Magazine, the magazine for tips, tricks, maps, news, comic strips, and industry insights straight from Nintendo themselves. Kids, ask your parents what magazines were and why it was so important to have tips, tricks, and maps. Captain Nintendo was originally created by Nintendo Power Magazine editor Randy Studdard. Randy pitched the idea of Captain Nintendo as the brand representative marketing character of Nintendo up to and including the fight against Mother Brain. Instead of a game playing kid from California, Captain Nintendo would have been a Nintendo employee who had the power of temporarily bringing characters and items from various games to life in the real world. The story Randy wrote featuring these characters was published in Nintendo Power issues 3 and 4 in 1988 and 1989. Nintendo decided to use the general idea for the character of Captain Nintendo as the basis for the cartoon Captain N, the Game Master. They also decided that, since they already technically owned the idea submitted by Randy Studdard, that he was not due any rights, credit, or payment. Kids, ask your parents why you should always have a lawyer present before sharing your intellectual property with anyone, especially corporate executives who employ you. 
Deke was already early in development of a Nintendo-themed cartoon that would have followed the adventures of the title character from the game Paperboy. It was going to be called Buddy Boy and would have featured a rotating cast of Nintendo characters traversing a dimensional portal bridging the Nintendo world and the real world and just happened to be located in Buddy Boy's closet. Captain N was lining up to be a TV star while Captain Nintendo was the name that Randy Stuttered was continuing to use while answering questions about various games in the viewer mail pages of Nintendo Power Magazine. Meanwhile, in Washington, throughout the 1980s, cartoon studios and toy manufacturers had been working very closely to coordinate their efforts to produce cartoons built around the mythology of their respective toy lines. You may have heard about a few of them on this show right here, hosted by me. <laughs> me. <laughs> so people, at the end, me. Parents, groups, and educators had become increasingly concerned about the number of hours that children were watching television, how little of it could be considered educational. Furthermore, the content of most of the entertainment being sold to kids was seen as blatant long-form advertising that served no purpose but to sell toys. As the 80s drew to a close and the 90s loomed, it was clear that legislators were going to force change on the animation industry, preventing the continued practice of using children's programming to sell directly to kids. A show called Captain Nintendo would have been a prime candidate to be terminated once it aired, if it aired at all. Captain N, on the other hand, walks a fine line by removing all direct references to the word Nintendo. They were able to skirt around the final piece of legislation, the Children's Television Act, which was signed in 1990, the year after Captain N debuted. What actually arrived on television in 1989 is reflective of the process that it took to produce it. Were the characters the most important part? Was the branding the most important part? Was the mythology the most important part? The final product bears almost no connection to the in-game personas of the characters. The cartoon was seemingly developed as a cartoon first, independent of any marketing edict forcing adherence to a style guide or character models in line with the games themselves. You want to do that one again? <laughs> No. Designers were not given any mandates as to character models or guidelines, just make interesting characters in an interesting cartoon. By the way, here's a list of their names and basic bullet points. Voice actors base their performances on the designs of the characters, not on the games themselves. Lack of marketing consistency is further evident in the comic book series published by Valiant Comics, which only features characters from Nintendo-branded games. No Capcom Mega Man, no Konami Simon Belmont. While the Valiant comic book was loosely based on the show, it had more freedom within the narrative and action due to the lack of restrictions that were in place for comics as opposed to TV. Season 1 and 2 of Captain N were released on DVD nearly 20 years later in 2007. They are considered the complete series and sold separately from Season 3 because technically Season 3 is a different show. Season 1 and 2 episodes were full 22-minute episodes, where Season 3 episodes are 11-minute shorts coupled together with similarly short shorts of the new Super Mario World. Why the long wait? The DVD releases required extensive re-editing of several of the original episodes. There's a lot of very popular music that is very expensive to license included in the series. In 1989, no thought was given to acquiring long-term licensing for the songs used in the episodes because there was no reason to. Streaming services and DVD collections of complete seasons weren't a thing. Every episode that had a song that needed licensing had to be re-edited to allow it to clear legal for release in 2007. For the age group that Nintendo was targeting, there was no better place to increase exposure than on Saturday morning cartoons. Despite potential legal barriers, Captain N found the ultimate warp zone to our world via Saturday mornings. While he never became the brand marketing character for Nintendo, for a brief period during the early years of the explosive growth of Nintendo in America, he was a very important piece of the puzzle. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. A very big thank you to those of you who already are. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy. Share this video and let us know in the comments down below what your Nintendo All-Star team would be. If you were sucked into video land by a television vortex, feel free to reach outside the characters in Super Smash Bros. My team is me, Ryu Hayabasa from Ninja Gaiden, the dudes from Contra, and the actual Mega Man, not whatever that thing is. 
featured <laughs> in Captain N. Seeing that dude on that show ranks in my top 10 media entertainment disappointment, disappointments of all time. It's number six. 